Good afternoon and welcome back to Asgard and welcome to a mod showcase on the mod Roots. So for those of you that don't know, Roots is a magic based mod and it's very um, almost shamanistic as far as the type of magic um, that you're going to be doing. So um, I'm not going to go over every single effect within the mod because a lot of it's rituals and spells and the way that you perform them is generally the same concept. Um, so you do have this runic tablet here. This is going to be the first thing that you want to craft. This is basically the documentation for the mod. Um, there's basically four pages all together. You have your natural arts page. You have spellcraft. You have rituals. And then you have sprites. And sprites are my personal favorite. Um, we'll get into those. Um, but anyway, basically the, um, the first page here the natural arts is pretty much going to cover world gen based things so for starters you can craft this bark knife um, and this thing is fairly easy to craft with just saplings wood and sticks and what this allows you to do is let's go let me actually grab a piece of wood here oops but for example you have say oak wood and let me go in here if you right click this you'll notice I got some oak bark. Now, this doesn't always um, break the block. It does have a pretty good chance of breaking um, the source block, but now I've got two, I've got three. I got four pieces before that one broke, but you'll notice this one broke on the first try. Um, so it just has like a, a decent chance to break. Um, in my personal uh, messing around with it, I can't find an exact percentage for you. Um, it just says a chance. I seem to notice it around maybe 30% chance that it's going to break um, from my personal experience with it. Um, and that's going to allow you to get bark of different kinds. So there's, arc, there's oak, spruce, birch, jungle, acacia, and dark oak. You know, all the different um, vanilla bark types. And now the next thing is you also have these, uh, the old root, the verdant sprig, the infernal bulb, and the dragon's eye. Now these are going to be used a lot in your rituals and stuff. And the way you get these, first off, the old root, um, you have a chance of getting this whenever you break tall grass. I think it's like a 1 in 20% chance that you're going, or a 1 in 20 chance that you're going to get an old root. The verdant sprig is obtained when you break fully grown crops, um, like wheat and potatoes and stuff. Now, personally, I've noticed that I don't seem to get these when I when I automate my farming. And it seems like it has to be manually obtained um, and not automated. Next up is the Infernal Bulb. And this is pretty much the same way. Uh, you get this the same way as the Verdant Sprig, except you get this one from Netherwart. Only from Netherwart. And then lastly, you have the Dragon's Eye, which is once again obtained the same way. But this one comes from the Chorus Fruit Bulbs at the top of the, um, the Chorus Fruits. So, um, and by the way, you can eat the dragon's eye and you can eat the old root as well. You can also turn the old root into a rooty stew um, if you're hungry just by combining it with wheat and a bowl. Um, and it does, if you notice, uh, it refills quite a bit of hunger and saturation. Um, now next up, you're going to want to make yourself one of these pestles. They're very easy to craft with just some diorite. Um, and basically this is going to be used in a lot of these early... Um, are basically these two um, <clears throat> starting uh, craftable items, but then also you're going to use it down the down the line with a mortar as well. Now the growth powder, the way this works is it's pretty much like um, almost like bone meal, but it creates grass. So if we were to throw this down on here, you'll notice it turns a big chunk of that into grass. So it allows you to get grass in places um, where normally you wouldn't be able to without having to make a silk touch tool. And then the other thing is the healing poultice. Now, basically, the way this works is if we were to go up here, go into game mode S, we take a bit of damage. Oh, am I on, I'm on peaceful? Let's do hard. All right. Do this again. Okay, so we take a bit of damage. And I can eat this poultice, and it's going to heal um, a decent amount of hearts from me. Um, oops, there we go. And so basically that's just a quick and easy healing potion with just some red dye, paper, and verdant sprig. Um, with your pestle, the growth powder is grass, seeds, and redstone with your mortar. Four of those. So fairly cheap to craft. Um, 
<clears throat> now moving on, that's pretty much everything in just the natural um, stuff, the world gen and everything. So the next thing is staff imbuement. Now this, I basically split all this up into tabs on the uh, runic tablet. So the spellcraft tab is all about imbuing staves with magic. Um, and eventually we'll get into a bit more um, eccentric staff imbuement, but this is the basics of it. So the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a mortar, a pestle, and an imbuer. And now the mortar will actually go down on the ground just like that. You only need one of these. And the same with the imbuer. It'll just go down the ground there as well. And the way that you use these, and like I said, I'm not going to go over every single um, effect because basically from here on down are all different effects that you can put on your, your staffs. And they all imbue the exact same way. So there's all different kinds in there. There's kinds that repel mobs or create barriers and all that. Um, so I'm going to quickly show you how to make one. And this is to make a frost effect. So what you're going to do is you're going to, um, for starters, like your starting um, spells, I'm actually going to need a stick as well. My bad. Um, you're going to put your ingredients in here. And you can find them uh, if you just open this up. For example, we're going to be doing the, um, where's it at, blistering cold. And in just a white tulip, a snowball, and a birch sapling. This little symbol here indicates mortar and pestle, and that's going to get you this petal dust. So, I swear it rains every single Minecraft day on here. We'll put a birch sapling, snowball, white tulip, and then you're also going to need basically a modifier enabler, um, is what I've, I've started calling them. Um, in this case, we're going to use an old root. It doesn't allow for any modifications to be added. We'll go over those next. Then you just right click there and you're going to get your petal dust and then you can put this petal dust into the imbuer along with a stick. It's going to play that cool music effect and drop out a staff. Now if you hold right click it works just like a bow. Once it's charged up, release it. And this one does like a cold effect and it can be used against mobs. Now you'll notice that this doesn't really go very far. And you'll notice it also shoots multiples of these. Um, in my testing each one of these does like half a heart of damage. So, for example, if I was to spawn in, uh, where's that, a creeper, and we hit him with this, you'll notice it only did a heart and a half of damage. So, not all that great. However, when you're making these spells, you can make modifiers. Now, the way this works is, depending on the type of modifier enabler as I call it um, it's going to allow for more modifiers now if you do um, <clears throat> the verdant sprig you're going to get be able to get one modifier infernal bulb is going to be two and dragon's eye is going to be three so let's say for example we get a dragon's eye now there's three different dusts that you can add as modifiers and basically you can look in here you'll see that glowstone will increase potency um, so it's going to be stronger. So in the case of our frost spell, it's going to do more damage. Uh, efficiency is going to be your redstone dust, and it's going to improve the casting cost, which basically allows you to have additional spells, um, spell costs on that staff. It's going to decrease the durability of that staff slower. Um, and then gunpowder is going to increase the area of effect. So let's say, for example, let's we let's go pure potency. So the way that we're going to do this is we are going to go Dragon's Eye and then go Birch, Snowball, White Tulip, Glowstone, Glowstone, Glowstone. And you'll notice now if we take a look at the Petal Powder that we got, it has a plus three potency. So then we can just put this into here, put our stick into here and get our new staff. And you'll notice on the, the tool tip, you can see that like this first staff that we made had 26 uses remaining. This one has 33. We didn't increase the amount of uses that we have. Um, but originally we were doing a heart and a half of damage. Uh, let me just spawn a new one in here. Now if we charge this up, um, we did four and a half hearts. So basically for each one of those potency increases, it increased the damage by one heart. So, you know, it's not a bad... Um, starter weapon per se but we'll make them a bit better down the road um, and that is pretty much how the spell casting um, within this mod works so um, like I said we'll cover in just a second we'll cover some more advanced more advanced stuff
All right, so next up we have Rituals. Now this is another major thing within the mod and another thing that has a number of different effects. Now you'll notice immediately not quite as many as the different spell effects. It seems like this mod is still receiving new content and stuff, um, and I imagine it will change over time. Um, but basically the first thing you're going to want to do in order to get your ritual area set up, which this is a maximum size ritual area, um, initially you can just put down this casting altar. Um, which is right here. You'll see that's crafted with some runestone, some runestone symbol, block of gold, verdant sprigs, and poppies. Not terribly expensive. And then you're also going to need some of these incense braziers. So also very, very cheap. Now eventually, with a full-size altar, um, if you want to be able to do all the different rituals within the mod, you're going to want 12 incense braziers around it. And they have to be placed in a 9 by 9 area um, around the casting altar. So basically, once you get a full-size altar, you'll be able to place them anywhere between the Attuned Standing Stone and the Casting Altar, and they need to be placed on the same level as the Casting Altar. So basically, you want a flat surface um, for your um, ritual area. Now, you can have things in the middle of it, like over here. You know, I've got water and lily pads and flowers and all this mess of stuff, a spirit font, which we'll get into all that stuff later. Um, you can have stuff in there. It doesn't have to be just pure grass, but... Um, you know, it is going to need to be a flat surface relatively um, with all your braziers and standing stones around it on the same level. Now, the only thing that you can do with just a casting altar is in imbue tools. And um, the way this works is you're going to use your wooden tool, your verdant spray, your gold ingot, and then a couple pieces of oak bark. And you'll be able to get a living tool. Now, I've got them here. I'm not going to show you how to make them just right this second. We're going to do a, a bit more of an advanced ritual. All the rituals work the same, and we'll go over it. Um, but basically, these living tools will automatically repair themselves, and they have um, <clears throat> a mining level and combat level and everything about equivalent to, I mean, to iron. So you can pretty much make an iron tool with just wood. So... Um, of course, it does also require um, a tad bit of gold as well. Um, so, <clears throat> but very, very nice because they do automatically repair themselves, which is really, really cool. So, for example, if I grab, say, the shovel here, let's go into game mode S. We'll break a little bit of that. And you'll notice that this repaired already back up to max. So, very, very nice tools for um, whenever you're starting a new world or something, and you just need some basic iron tools when you don't have the resources to make a lot of stuff. Now, inevitably, if you want to go in with roots, you're going to have to upgrade your altar, so the first step is going to be making these mundane standing stones. Whoops. And <laughs> the way these are crafted is just some more of that rune stone um, with some redstone. And by the way, the rune stone is lapis and stone for four pieces of that. Um, and you can also change this into decorative blocks. I forgot to mention that. Um, basically, all of this right here, and you'll also see that you can make stairs and slabs out of this stuff as well. So, very, very cool. And by the way, any of these glowing blocks you see, you'll see some right over there. And um, with this stone ver uh, variant as well, this produces as much light as glowstone as well. So, these do provide a light source when used for building. Um, and then also, by the way, this runestone symbol is crafted just by combining runestone with flint. But anyway, once you get these mundane standing stones, you're basically going to bring them out two or three blocks from the, um, the casting altar and then put them almost in a nine by nine configuration with the casting altar in the middle. Um, <clears throat> and those are go going to allow you to do some improved rituals. So we have animal reanimation, which allows you to reanimate dead animals and there's different rituals for different animals so we have ones for rabbits and chickens and so on um, you can also imbue staves and um, basically you can make this crystal staff and this crystal staff I have one made right over here um, actually this one doesn't have a spell in it we'll actually animate we'll actually uh, do this ritual really really quick so the way that this works is you're going to need to make one of your powders, and you can do potency and all that good stuff with it. So let's say, let's do our snowball powder. All right, once we get our petal dust, we'll put it into, we'll put our verdant sprig that we talked about earlier, and our crystal staff into there. Put our petal powder here, and we'll go ahead and light it, and then shift 
right click the altar. That's how we initiate any kind of rituals that we do. It's going to do all these cool particle effects. And make our staff for us. Now this one automatically has, you'll notice it has 129 uses um, when you first get it. So it does have a ton more uses than, um, you know, our old wooden staves that we were using and all that. In addition, this thing can hold up to four different spells. And the way you change spells is you're going to shift right click. And it's going to cycle through. Now I only put one spell on here, but this crystal staff can have up to four on it. And um, that's pretty much how that works. Um, there is also rituals in here for downfall control. You can make it rain or you can make it stop raining. Um, and by the way, when you're looking at these rituals, this top part that almost looks like a table with some fire or something on it, that's what goes on your casting altar. And down here, if you see something here, that means it's going to be burned as an incense within your incense braziers. See, I told you it rains all the time. Um, and now, once again... You're eventually going to have to upgrade this once more by making there we go, by making these attuned standing stones. Now these are crafted basically with just some nether brick, diamond, and rune stone. Once again, fairly cheap. And these, you're only going to need four of them, whereas your mundane standing stones, you needed eight of them. So once you have those, you have access to even more advanced rituals. So we have monster reanimation, where we can bring back zombie skeletons, spiders, creepers, cave spiders, slime, and endermen. Just by using parts of them, we can summon one. You can also make some of the special armor from the mod. You have the uh, druidic robes or the sylvan armor, and you also have the defender armor. And so the defender armor, if we throw that on, you'll notice we kind of look like Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy and basically this stuff has fairly stout defense it's about between iron and diamond um, is the defense and if you notice it's fairly cheap once you get up to that ritual size one iron uh, armor piece a diamond and some wood with some oak bark and wheat and saplings is going to get you this armor and what's really really nice about this stuff is whenever you take damage once again it's automatically going to repair itself just like the living tools did that we messed with earlier and then in addition you can make the sylvan set and now the sylvan set we throw this on I actually really love this graphic too um, because you have like these like wooden spikes sticking out of your back and now this set once again will automatically repair itself and it has fairly decent armor on it um, you'll notice the full set all in all has um, what 14 armor so not terrible, and you'll notice that each piece increases your Terra regeneration and gives plus one efficiency. And Terra is actually something I forgot to talk about really, really quick. Um, if you notice above my hunger bar, there's all these little like leaves, and whenever I cast a spell, it's going to take a little bit of that Terra and then quickly regenerate. Basically, that is your magic, um, your MP, if you will. Um, and whenever you cast a spell, it's going to go down, but then it's going to quickly regenerate. And there's no real way, um, aside from this armor, really to speed that up. Now this armor is going to, each piece is going to increase your terror regeneration. If I didn't have this armor on, and say I grab the staff and cast the spell, you'll see it takes a little bit longer to regenerate. So, but with the full set, it's a bit quicker. So definitely, definitely a useful set if you get really into the spells of the mod. Um, and then in addition, if you have the full set equipped, you're going to get plus one efficiency, which of course is going to give you more spell casts um, with your uh, spells, like on your staves and stuff. So very, very handy set to use if you're going to be doing a lot of spell casting. And now the last thing to cover with this, um, oh, the rest of the uh, different spells that you have, you have Energized Stones, which we'll go over each of these. Um, basically, they are attuned standing so stones that are upgraded. And there's different ones. We have one for Vacuum. We have one for Pulse, um, Accelerate, Aesthetic, Entangling, Igniting, Growing, Healing. And then what we're going to do is, let's say, let's put down a vacuum one. And let's throw down this. Oh, oops. 
and we're going to give this a redstone signal, you'll notice that it pulls items into it. And then, let's say, for example, we switch that over to a repulsing. There we go. And we throw down an item, it pushes it away. Now, for some reason, it doesn't... If we have this turned off, and we throw that down, you'll notice it doesn't affect items that are already on the ground. That's kind of strange. Um, so it only affects things that um, have just been thrown down. And then, in addition, we have Accelerating. This one is very, very nice. If this is turned on, you'll notice that we get a Speed 2 buff anytime that we're near this. And there's no cost at all, either. It doesn't have to be any kind of, you know, energy, none of that. It just, you set it down, and there you go, you have a Speed 2, as long as it has a Redstone signal. Um, there is also Aesthetic. Now, this one doesn't necessarily need a... Um, <coughs> Uh, redstone signal, but if we take, say, like a die, okay, there we go, I couldn't get it to, couldn't get it to change there for a second, but you'll notice that the particle effects turned blue, and then let's say we add a little bit of red in there, and we can keep adding red and kind of change the particles, and then anytime that you want to reset it, you can just use a little bit of bone meal, and turn it back to this, like, grayish color, but the more you can change the different spectrum and everything with this using red, blue, and green. So really, really cool and you can make all these like, you know, you can make your own personalized color and everything. It's really, really neat. <laughs> it's one of my favorites personally. Um, and then there is also entangling. Now this one, if you notice, we get slowness too when we get near it. Now granted, this is probably going to be more for like mobs and stuff would be the reason that you want to put this down, but that's what it does. And then we also have igniting. Now this one, when it has a redstone signal, you'll notice that it's trying to catch us on fire. If we go to game mode S, you'll notice that it catches us on fire. This could be used, of course, for some kind of a mob grinder or something if you so desired. Then next up we have the growing standing stone. And basically what this does is this is going to act like bone meal. Um, it's going to increase the growth rate of plants um, around it. And, of course, it's like a free constant effect bone meal. And then, lastly, you have healing, which is going to give you a constant regeneration effect um, when it's placed down with a redstone signal. So, needless to say, some very, very useful blocks. Um, these energized standing stones. And then, next up, we have sacrifice. Now, this one, I want to go ahead and give you a major, major warning. For those of you that watch my All the Mods series, I recently did the Sacrifice one. Um, basically what it does is it's going to, whenever you do this ritual, you'll notice it takes some flint, iron sword, and bone in the altar, some blaze powder, and some dark oak in the braziers as incense. Whenever you do this, it's going to kill one random mob within the area of effect of the altar. So basically this 11 by 11 structure, one mob inside of it's going to die, and you're going to get a random... Um, plant and it could be anything um you know like super rare like a chorus fruit or something or or not really super rare but you know it takes a bit more time to get or something like that or it could be something like a vine in my case in my all the mods episode i got a, a vine but you want to make sure that you are not standing within this because whenever it goes off it can kill you <laughs> and in my case it did not drop a gravestone so I just died, lost everything, all my armor, everything, um, and uh, got a vine for my troubles. So um, be careful when you use that ritual. Just warning you. You also have time shift that for the cost of four oxide daisies, you can change the time. Now, it's going to change the time dependent on how many oxide daisies that you burn in the incense altar. And once again, make sure and read these descriptions because you notice that this one doesn't look like you need any incense, you do. You burn oxide daisies, and the more oxide daisies that you burn, the more it's going to um, change the time. And up to four can be burned, and basically four is going to change it from night to day or, or day to night. And then lastly, you have this wild wood one. And basically, if you place um, wood around it, and we're actually going to do this one, just so I can show you how this works. So we're going to need... Um, oak bark, spruce, jungle, acacia, verdant spray, glowstone, and vines. Alright, so now that we have all of that, let's go ahead and place it in here. And let's get ourselves just any kind of wood is fine. 
Uh, we're just going to use oak. And we're going to place it around here. It's about a three range from the altar. So basically anything within these mundane standing stones is pretty much how to think of it. Uh, I think you can even put it out here as well. Um, and then you're going to want to set your incense in. Why did you bounce out, hey? Eh? Go ahead and light that. That. And then we'll shift, right click this. And of course it's going to take a second. It's going to play those cool like sound effects and everything. Okay, so it doesn't quite reach out to the mundane standing stones. So pretty much anything with, between the mundane standing stones and the casting altar is going to be changed over into this wildwood log. So you can kind of think of it almost like the Batania, um, you know, the pure daisy and stuff. And you can put as many as you want, as many as you can fit uh, within this area. I swear this rain. Um, and once again, these can be made into decorative blocks. You have wildwood logs and wildwood bark. Wildwood bark is basically four pieces of logs together um, to create the bark version. And if you notice, it's pretty similar. The only difference is it doesn't have the wood grain on the top. Um, and you have with symbols, you have it with uh, glowing symbols. Then you also have planks that look just like this. And by the way, one last thing to keep in mind when you're doing these rituals is these incense brazers are going to retain um, their incense for a while. Eventually this will burn out. Um, but until then, I could do, I could take down all this wildwood log, throw the stuff back down, throw it in the casting altar, um, and then do the ritual with the same incense. So if you're going to do the same ritual a lot, like say for infusing spells or something, you can use, reuse the same incense. But if you want to get rid of this for maybe another ritual or something, you can just shift right click to turn these off and it'll it'll dispose of any um, incense within the altar all right but I do believe I'm going to end part one there um, this will be a two-part mod uh, spotlight next part we'll come back and we'll talk about sprites and that's the last page in the tablet um, but it is very involved and very very interesting you'll notice different sizes of sprites there's actually one more that I don't have here which is a boss um, so we'll take a look at all of that and how to domesticate them how to make them just kind of hang out here um, you'll notice that even in peaceful mode they do not despawn um, so there is a lot involved with them, new items and everything. So, um, anyway, I hope that you guys join me for that and I hope you found this interesting. And as always, if you guys have any questions or anything, um, feel free to let me know and I will do my best to help you. And until next time, as always, do take care and I hope to see you guys then.